It is sometimes advised that different muscles should be trained with different rep ranges based on their dominant fiber type. However, do certain muscles really respond better or worse to different rep ranges? Or is this not a true phenomenon? And in practical terms, should we train each muscle in different rep ranges based on their fiber type composition? To answer these questions, we first need to understand what muscle fibers are. In the simplest sense, muscle fibers are the individual cells of a muscle. They are mostly made up from myofibrils, which are the contractile elements of the muscle. Each muscle contains thousands of muscle fibers, which all act together to contract and relax to produce force and create movement. However, not all muscle fibers are exactly the same. Essentially, there are two main types of muscle fibers, type 1 and type 2. Furthermore, type 2 fibers are also subcategorized into 2A and 2X fibers. Each of these different muscle fiber types are slightly unique in their characteristics, making them more or less suitable for different exercise tasks. Type 1 fibers are also sometimes referred to as slow twitch fibers. This is because they can't produce as much force and cannot produce this force as quickly as the other type 2 fibers. However, type 1 fibers are more fatigue resistant, meaning they can continue to produce force for longer. These characteristics make these fibers more suitable for endurance type activities and less suitable for strength or power based exercise. Type 2A and 2X fibers are both similar in properties. Collectively, type 2 fibers are often referred to as fast twitch muscle fibers. This is because they are able to produce higher forces and can produce force much faster than the type 1 fibers. However, these fibers are less fatigue resistant, so they can't sustain this force for a long duration. This makes them more suitable for strength and power type activities, but less suitable for endurance exercise. The type 2X fibers are thought to be able to produce slightly more force at a faster rate, which makes them more suitable for speed and power type activities. Whereas 2A fibers are thought to be slightly more fatigue resistant than type 2X fibers, making them slightly more suitable to slower strength type activities. So essentially, each muscle is made up from a combination of these different fiber types. It is proposed that some muscles have a higher proportion of type 1 fibers, while other muscles have a higher proportion of type 2 fibers. While this is true, it seems that most muscles have a relatively even proportion of both type 1 and type 2 fibers. This study measured the muscle fiber types of a range of different muscles of six young men. As we can see, most muscles on average had a fairly even distribution of type 1 versus type 2 muscle fibers. There were some clear outliers such as the soleus, which is the flat calf muscle underneath the ball-shaped gastrocnemius muscle, which was composed on average of around 88% type 1 fibers while the triceps were on average composed of around 67% type 2 fibers. So as we can see, different muscles have different proportions of the different fiber types, but most muscles probably have a fairly even split between them. Furthermore, we cannot say that these values are relevant for every single lifter. These are just the average fiber type distributions that were found across the people measured. While some muscles may be more or less dominant in type 1 or type 2 fibers in most people on average, there is also likely to be substantial variation between individuals. If we look at the same study as before, we can see that there are substantial differences between individuals. For example, this subject had 72% proportion of type 1 fibers of the glute max, while this individual only had a 41% proportion. So, in reality, you could have substantially different muscle fiber distributions compared with the average findings. And to make this even more variable, it seems that muscle fibers are able to shift over time based on what type of exercise you perform. This research review concluded that fiber types can shift from slow to fast twitch and vice versa as a result of the type of exercise you perform. Furthermore, fibers can take on characteristics of other fiber types, leading to what is known as hybrid fibers. So all in all, you don't really know what your exact fiber distribution is for any given muscle. And chances are that for most muscles, the proportion of type 1 and type 2 fibers is likely to be fairly even 
apart from a few specific muscle groups. So now that we have a basic understanding of muscle fibre types, let's now explore if fibre type distribution influences muscle growth. It is sometimes claimed that muscles which are dominant in type 1 fibres will see greater growth from higher rep ranges with lighter loads, while type 2 fibres will see greater growth from lower rep ranges with heavier loads. And this makes logical sense. Type 1 fibres are better suited to endurance type exercise, so they may respond better to higher rep ranges with lighter loads. Type 2 fibres are better suited to strength and power based exercise, so they may respond better to lower rep ranges with heavier loads. So is this really a true phenomenon? Well, the best evidence we have on this topic is this meta-analysis, which analyzed the entire body of research comparing heavier versus lighter loads and their effects on fiber hypertrophy. And as we can see in this forest plot, there was no significant difference in muscle growth of type 1 fibers with either light or heavy loads. And the same results were found for type 2 fibers, which saw no significant difference when trained with light versus heavy loads either. However, the researchers did mention that because there was large variations between studies and there wasn't a very large body of evidence, we probably need more research on this topic before we can conclusively dismiss this idea. So from what we know so far, it seems that training with either lower or higher rep ranges doesn't really seem to preferentially grow either fiber type. Rather, both fiber types will probably see great muscle growth across a variety of different rep ranges as long as we are training fairly close to failure. So why is this the case? Well, this probably comes down to how muscle fibers are recruited by the nervous system. Motor unit recruitment follows what is known as the size principle. The size principle states that the smaller and weaker type 1 fibers are always recruited first, and the bigger type 2 fibers are always recruited last, and only if required. So this again would line up with the theory that lighter loads would preferentially train the type 1 fibers, while heavier loads would preferentially train the type 2 fibers. However, when performing hypertrophy style training, we also need to consider that we are usually training close to failure. This impacts motor unit recruitment throughout the set. When lifting on the heavier side of the hypertrophy spectrum, let's say around 5 to 10 reps, pretty much all of the muscle fibers will contribute to the movement from the very first rep. Although when training on the lighter end of the hypertrophy spectrum, let's say around 12 to 20 reps, the type 1 fibers will definitely be recruited initially, but not all of the type 2 fibers, because they aren't needed to contribute to force production for the first few reps. However, as we get closer and closer to failure, the type 1 fibers will fatigue and not be able to produce the required force to continue lifting. So the stronger type 2 fibers will start to progressively kick in as we get closer and closer to failure, until they too fatigue and can no longer continue to produce enough force to move the weight. So what this suggests is that whether we are training with lighter or heavier loads, all muscle fibers will eventually be recruited and trained as long as we are training close to failure. It is still possible that type 1 fibers may potentially receive a slightly superior stimulus from higher rep ranges, and that type 2 fibers may receive a slightly superior stimulus from lower rep ranges, but it doesn't seem likely that this will make much of a difference for long-term muscle growth. Furthermore, this concept has even less practical relevance when we look at overall muscle growth across different rep ranges. It is quite clear that we can achieve equal muscle growth across a large spectrum of different rep ranges and loads. This has been well established in multiple systematic reviews and meta-analyses. This systematic review provides a good practical recommendation for effective hypertrophy rep ranges. The authors suggested that when training anywhere in the approximate 6 to 20 rep range and taking each set close to failure, muscle growth will be similar. So chances are that whether we train with higher or lower rep ranges, overall muscle growth will probably be similar, regardless if the type 1 or 2 fibers are slightly emphasized over one another. Although this does also bring up the possibility that training a muscle with different rep ranges may promote slightly superior long-term hypertrophy by maximizing growth of both fiber types. While this certainly is a possibility, most lifters are probably training the same muscle in various different rep ranges anyway, 
as a result of exercise selection. This is because certain exercises are usually best suited to different rep ranges. For example, squat variations are usually best suited to the lower end of the hypertrophy rep ranges, around 5 to 8 reps. However, leg extensions are more suitable to train in slightly higher rep ranges, around 10 to 15 reps or even more. So in this case, we are naturally training the quads in various different rep ranges already, without conscious intent. So if it is true that we can emphasize different fiber types based on the rep ranges we lift with, then we may already be taking advantage of this in our training program. However, if you find that you seem to be only hitting a particular muscle with a similar rep range each time you train it, then it may be wise to undulate this rep range slightly between sessions. So what does all of this mean regarding what we do in the gym? Well, firstly, most muscles probably have a fairly even split between type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers, and there is substantial variation of fiber type proportions between individuals. So we don't really know if a muscle is particularly dominant in either fiber type, which means we can't really train this according to fiber type anyway. Furthermore, it seems that training with different rep ranges probably doesn't preferentially hypertrophy type 1 versus type 2 fibers, although more research is needed before we can confirm this. And even if this is a well-established phenomenon, it probably isn't all that helpful anyway. This is because most people will already be training most muscles in various different rep ranges, because different exercises are usually trained with different rep ranges. So with our current understanding of the evidence, it is probably not worth spending too much effort worrying about training according to fiber type. Rather, I would recommend training in the rep ranges that make the most sense according to each exercise. By doing this, you will naturally undulate rep ranges and take advantage of any potential benefits of preferencing each fiber type. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.